Hello everyone, I wanted to show you my new project uh, today. Um, it is a shortwave infrared uh, imaging using a line scan camera. Um, so I bought this camera um, for 800, 850 on eBay. This is a line scan camera, so it has only uh, one line uh, sensor and it's a indium gallium arsenide um, uh, sensor. Um, the sensor uh, has uh, 1024 pixels so it's a uh, quite high uh, number of pixels um, so I think uh, even though this is an old camera recently uh, there is still a maximum 2048 so uh, double as much pixel available of course I think that was a uh, some that has something to do with the limitation on the on the size of the sensor. So you can see this sensor is, is quite large. So it's a it's a 25 or 26 uh, millimeters long uh, sensor. So um, basically, if you do more uh, more pixels, uh, it will just get larger and larger. And uh, there's just simply then at some point uh, no lens uh, which can which can produce that kind of image. That yeah, not not available uh, because uh, there's no, not much demand for it, I guess. So there's the camera itself. It has all um, uh, little uh, cooling structures on it um, because it's a cooled sensor. So uh, under the sensor, there's a two-stage um, uh, Peltier um, thermoelectric cooling. And um, yeah, so the camera itself is a has a uh, camera link connector. That's quite usual with uh, this kind of uh, industrial um, cameras, the camera link connector. Unfortunately, it's not very easy to, to get uh, this uh, portable, um, but um, yeah, but I will, I will try my best. Yeah, um, It has a power connector, which is a simple high rose 8 pin uh, connector. It can accept quite a wide range of voltages. Um, but we'll use just simply uh, 12 volt. Uh, uh, um, there is two more connectors here uh, for analog inputs. Uh, there's a trigger, so you can trigger the camera when it should be doing a, um, um, uh, recording images. And uh, it, you can also synchronize uh, the, the recording uh, with uh, you know, some kind of motors or, or whatever external signals. Um, yeah, so uh, some more information here. Yeah, it's a 1.7 RT version. So I think this camera came, this is a legacy uh, product, but they when, they, they when they produced it, it came in three different versions. 1.7 means that it's sensitive up to uh, 1,700 nanometers in the shortwave infrared. And, uh, and it starts somewhere at 800 nanometers or maybe even uh, a bit lower uh, the sensitivity so it will have about 10% uh, uh, quantum efficiency uh, at that wavelength from the other side uh, it has a uh, m42 um, um, thread yeah and um, using this thread you can connect a converter so you can yeah, probably also directly put M42 um, lenses on it, but using this uh, converter, you can just uh, screw this into the camera, and then you get like uh, this uh, this usual, uh, I think F mount, uh, um, what is used with uh, with normal uh, um, consumer uh, lenses, and then you can mount your lens, which looks like this. This particular lens uh, came with the um, with the uh, camera, so they kind of used it with it already. It's a 50 millimeter uh, Nikon lens. It's not specifically designed for uh, shortwave infrared, so I'm a little bit worried that might be the, the resolution might be not good enough, or we will get like a lot of um, um, you know blur uh, because of the um, reflections. Um, inside uh, the lens so because of the coatings are because the anti-reflection coatings are not right but yeah I guess we will see that uh, once uh, uh, the, 
I managed to get some images from the camera. And uh, the specialty of this little mount here is uh, too that uh, you can you can change the distance from the uh, from the sensor. Yeah. So these lenses are um, designed for the visible uh, uh, range, of course. Um, and uh, for the for the shortwave infrared, the, the focal length, which is now 50 millimeters on this one, uh, will be a bit longer. So uh, the effective focal length, so you will you will have to um, um, you will have to change here the distance you will, you will, uh, to to get sharp images. Um, I'm hoping this is already preset actually because yeah, someone apparently used it. Yeah, so it's a used uh, camera. All right. So right, so um. So that's the lens. Um, there's a little O-ring which comes with it. I guess that's just because um, you can adjust the the cooling of the camera. Yeah, so you can I think uh, go down um, to. Yeah, I'm not really sure. Um, but but you can you can adjust the cooling and um, you, you don't want, you don't want to get uh, any precipitation, any um, any water going on this uh, on this sensor uh, when it gets too cold and the humidity in the. Um, and the room is uh, is too high. Um, what else we have here? So I have a, a CD which uh, basically comes with uh, the um, the camera configuration uh, file. Um, little CD. I even have to use a external uh, <laughs> oopsie an external uh, uh, reader <laughs> for that because uh, uh, you know most of the laptops don't have uh, this kind of technology anymore. Um, um, anyway, so it has a, uh, the manual on it, which is also printed, yeah, um, and uh, the com camera configuration file. Um, the camera is supposed, so it's, it's uh, uh, so the, the configuration file is given for National Instruments um, uh, frame grabbers devices. Um, unfortunately, National Instruments um, has only uh, PCI or PCIe uh, Express PCIe um, um, frame grabbers, which um, are of course not uh, suitable for for portable devices. So, like, you have to uh, have a PC and uh, put this uh, put this frame grabber in a in the uh, on the motherboard uh, one of the PCI slots. So. I don't know how much I can uh, use this uh, if I want to make this portable. Um, yeah, to make it portable, so um, or to 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 what what I will use uh, instead of the national instrument um, frame grabber, I was thinking that uh, this company uh, Pleora Pleora I think uh, Technologies they do uh, external frame grabbers. So it means you don't have to uh, put this in your PC uh, fixed. Uh, you can, you know, just give it uh, again some power. That's uh, gonna be 12 volts again. You can uh, connect the camera on one side using the camera link, and um, on the other side you will just have uh, the usual Ethernet uh, gigabit uh, Ethernet uh, connection, and. Um, you can basically configure this uh, this little box um, to com communicate uh, with the um, with the camera. So, like, you can tell it, um, you know, how to communicate, how to get uh, get the get the data from the camera, and it will just uh, uh, work as a normal um, industrial camera with an Ethernet uh, connection. There's another strange connector here, PLC. Um, I don't know. I don't think I will use this. And uh, unfortunately, there was only uh, this little box available on eBay, uh, which is uh, which is for medium cameras. So it means uh, the medium camera link cameras use two of these uh, connectors, and um, and uh, simultaneously, and uh, of course. Uh, the camera itself is a uh, is a base uh, type camera link, so I'm hoping really uh, that that it will work also with this one. So you just connect uh, the camera on the one port, and uh, you get uh, the uh, the 
connection on the other port. So I'm hoping that it will work. Um, it should work uh, according to what I read uh, about the uh, working principle of this uh, base and medium uh, connect type of connection. So it's gonna be the little box. Yeah, the the box will be the frame grabber. Uh, will be controlled uh, using uh, the eBus. Uh, I think it's called eBus uh, player from uh, Pleora. Um, yeah, um, we will see. We will see how it works. But uh, that's the that's the solution basically. So we will need a power 12 volt here, 12 volt for the camera. Um, luckily, I have uh, also from the uh, from the manufacturer, uh, even though it's legacy product, um, the the right uh, connector with the right uh, uh, voltage and uh, power requirements. So yeah. I'm, I'm hoping that uh, this will definitely work nice. Uh, yeah, what else? Um, so, for I will, I will need, of course, a, a normal uh, Ethernet cable. Um, I think it uh, should be category 5 or maybe even 6. Um, we will see. If, if it uh, is not the right category, uh, if I just uh, drop a lot of frames or generate some noise, disconnect the stuff, but uh, yeah, I think uh, this is probably a category five at least. It's a premium, huh? Yeah, it doesn't say it. Anyway, uh, so Ethernet cable. Um, they also send uh, from Polytech uh, this uh, cable for uh, it's a normal uh, analog uh, cable, uh, BNC, to uh, trigger the camera. Um, I might use that, uh, or I kind of read on the on the eBay uh, description uh, where the uh, camera was sold that uh, they didn't have a trigger so couldn't uh, trigger the camera uh, to, to get frames uh, all right okay uh, I hope the camera works uh, anyway it looks actually I, I powered it up and uh, it's uh, it, it looks okay so um, I just really have to figure out the connections and uh, there's one more piece here which is a important part of the setup. Um, so of course we have a line scan camera, yeah. So to to get normal two D images instead of just one D, and we will have to uh, mount the camera here and uh, rotate it around. So this little little uh, box uh, is uh, used in photography to to do some uh, nice uh, panoramas and things. So you mount the camera on top, uh, you uh, connect uh, through Bluetooth, and uh, you can. Uh, set up uh, at what speed and what angle it should be rotating uh, this this top attachment to it. Yeah, you can mount it on a tripod. So yeah, that that should do it. I did it uh, earlier with uh, with this um, uh, hyperspectral imager um, uh, which I made portable. Um, that was uh, of course also recording uh, lines, or you know, it, it was it was recording uh, kind of uh, lines. Um, so yeah, I just have to mount the camera on it and uh, and get it uh, uh, rotating. That uh, that's a very easy solution. It can uh, take maximum uh, three kilograms, so um, it's also suitable for for larger objects. Um, this is how the rotation will be solved. Unfortunately, the camera uh, has its mounting holes on the bottom, and uh, the mounting holes are oriented uh, uh, perpendicular to this uh, sensor. So if I want to scan the camera around, I will have to rotate it 90 degrees and uh, record the images like this. Well, so for that, I will need to design a bracket which uh, mounts um, uh, on the um, on the kind of on it, so I can uh, put this uh, rotation device on the bottom and mount the camera from the side. So I will design that and 3D print it. Uh, that will be also some kind of fun in this project. So. You see, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's it's quite a bit of uh, work. Um, these development projects always. Uh, some people think, yeah, okay, if you if you just get a, a device um, and uh, you can just turn it on and use it, but uh, you know, industrial and uh, and uh, and uh, these kind of equipment uh, needs always a lot of uh, work to just get it working. So. Um, 
Yeah, that's the little part here of, of the project. Uh, the goal is to, to get it um, um, portable. Uh, so I will have a really nice um, indium gallium arsenide um, shortwave infrared camera, uh, which we would usually be able to buy for, let's say, 20,000. Uh, so yeah, I guess uh, the project costs will, will reach 2,000 at the end, but um, but yeah. I'm really looking forward to it, so thank you very much for watching and um, I will report back on the progress. Thanks, bye.